How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this one, we're going to go over conditional branches in its entirety. So let's jump into it. Inside your project, we're going to create a new event. Make sure you're on this layer right here. And then you can double click somewhere. You can right click and create new, or you can even press enter to create a new event. Once you've created a new event, let's go ahead and right click and put in a new one. We're going to go down to flow control on page one and click on conditional branch. And we're going to talk about everything thing there is to know about conditional branches. Pretty simple. A conditional branch is going to help you control the flow of your game and the flow of your event and what happens and you can specify all of your conditions here in the conditional branch. We have four pages. We're going to go over these four pages and everything individually. The first thing you see on page one is switch. So when you click on these three dots, you're going to be presented with the select a switch menu. And you can add maximum if you need to make space by clicking here. Now you have more space right here. This may look different depending on your display properties, which you can change if you go to tools, options, and then the object selector. I have selected smart, which will alternate between drop down and extended depending on the number of things that it's going to be displaying. So if it looks different, check that out. So the first thing is switch. We're going to pick a switch. You can pick whichever switch you want. You can create a new switch. You can make a conditional statement that checks if the switch is on or if the switch is off. You can also check this box, which is creates an else branch, which will allow the flow control to run another conditional branch or if this conditional branch isn't met then do the else handler so if we were to say actor selected switch is on and we say okay when you run this event it will only do what's inside of this contents if this switch is on that gives you the dev control over the flow of the game and if a npc is going to say what you want it to say you can have it check to see if the player has met all the conditions to get the reward or whatever it may be. The next one is a variable and it works the same way as a switch except it's not an off or on. We have a lot more functionality with the variable. So let's just take any variable here. And then the next drop down we have is going to determine how to interpret the constants or the variable that it's passing through. So in this case, if we say variable random x location is equal to zero and hit okay, the contents of this conditional branch will only run if this variable equals zero. We can change this to say greater than equals zero. So now this will run if it's anything above zero. We can set it to be less than or equal. And we can say like maybe 10. If this variable is less than or equal to 10, then this contents, the contents of this condition will run. We can also assign another variable to check a variable. We can say if this variable is greater than this other variable then run the contents of this condition you can say less than or not equal so if at any point we have this not equal sign whenever this variable is not equal to this variable then run the contents of this event this is really just about understanding basic eventing slash programming. While you're using conditional branches in RPG Maker, you're essentially practicing your programming because this is just like a programming language and most object-oriented programming languages are going to work the same way that you're using your events in RPG Maker. If you do spend time learning this, it's going to put you in the right direction for learning coding later on. The next is a self switch. The self switch is dependent on the event itself. This is going to check to see if this event ID number three has self switch A turned on. And if so, it's going to run the contents. And if not, it's going to skip past this entire thing. You can also run the check if it's off, if self switch A is off. In this case, it would run the contents of this event. All of the switches are off by default. The next is a timer, and you can have something run based on a number set of time. So at this point, we're also given the option greater than equal to or less than equal to. So we can say while the timer is greater than equal to five seconds run something or while the timer is less than equal to five seconds run something on page two we have more control over what the actor has so we can select any actor we want and we can do many things based on what they have we can make a conditional branch to see if their name is something specific if they name their character 
Drifty, well then, if the first char- if the first actor's name is Drifty, then you can have something play whenever you want. The class, you can check, you can run a conditional branch and check to see if an actor is a specific class. You can also see if that actor has a specific skill, currently knows how to use that skill, then it would return true. You can check to see if that actor is currently equipped a specific weapon, and if they are, then it will return true. And if they are not wearing that specific weapon, then it will return false. Be careful when you're using independent items here. You may have some different results. If you're using a battle axe that's an independent item, then it may return as false, even though you're checking for it as true. And this is all referring to certain plugins that you may see in the future. Armor, it's the same thing. If the player is wearing this, if the actor is wearing this specific armor, return true. If not, return false. And then also, if the actor is under the effects of a specific state, return true. And if not, return as false. The else branch is on all of these. The next page on tab three, we have enemies. Right here, you have a question mark and numbers one through eight. This basically means the enemy that's in the first position all the way up to the enemy that's in the eighth position and there can only be eight enemies in a combat so this is checking a conditional branch for that specific enemy so if this first enemy has appeared then return is true or you can say if this first enemy is currently poisoned run this code you would put this stuff where you see conditional branch of enemy. Most likely, this would not be in the contents of a regular event. Instead, you would go into your troop events. Inside your troop events, this is where you would use the conditional branch selecting an enemy. So in this instance, you see how the question mark populated with the goblin? That's because it's looking at the enemy in slot number one for this troop. So you definitely are going to use tab three inside the troop events instead of a regular event. You could instead use this inside a common event and then call this common event from the troop events and insert the common event right here. The next is for a specific character or event and you can check their facing. So you can see if the player is facing down, facing left, right, up. If this event, whatever event you're putting this on, of course you wouldn't use this inside the troop events. So let's get rid of this. Go back to our other event that's on the map. If the player is facing down or if this event is facing left, you know, return is true. And if they're not facing left, it will return as false. And when it returns as false, it just skips the code. It does not run. Next, you can check to see if a ship, airship, or boat is currently being driven. You could have something special happen like a new weather event or some kind of animation being played when you're only on the airship. You can have like uh, maybe clouds appear while you're on the airship. If you set this to a parallel and you've got while the airship is being driven, display cloud PNGs with a cooldown or whatnot. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And finally, on page four, we have a lot of different things we can do. We can check to see how much gold the party has, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, or just less than. This is to check to see if the player has the right resources before you give them the bonus. For example, if you go to a inn and they say you have to have 100 gold to rest, you can say, does the player have greater than 100 gold? And if they do, then you can let them rest, continue, continue, blah, 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 change gold, take the 100 gold, yada, yada. Otherwise, you would do an else branch and say you don't have enough gold. The next is just to see if the player currently has an item in their inventory. If they do have that item in their inventory, then it will return as true. If they don't have it, it will return as false and skip it. If you do an else branch, when it returns as false, it goes into the else branch. As far as the flow control is concerned, in this instance, if the party has a potion, it will do this, and then it will skip the else handler, and it will just end. But if the party does not have a potion, it will skip all the contents here and go to the else handler, and then end. The next is a weapon, just to see if the party has the weapon. The next box is to extend that check to see if they have the weapon and or are they currently holding that weapon. Because if they're currently holding that weapon, then this would return true. If you don't want to check if the party is holding the weapon, but you want to see if they have the weapon, then you would uncheck include equipment, and then you're just checking the inventory, not if they're holding it. 
The next is for the armor, and the same stuff applies. Does the party possess an iron breastplate? And if they do, it will return as true. But right now, it will go to the else handler. It will return as false if the party is equipping an iron breastplate or doesn't even own an iron breastplate. If you want to include the equipment, you have to check the box, obviously. So now, if the player is wearing the iron breastplate, it will return as true and run this code and then end instead of the else handler. So the next one is button, and you can select several different buttons to choose from, and you have three options for this conditional branch. You have is being pressed, is being triggered, and is being repeated. The first one, is being pressed, means the conditions will count as being met the entire time that the button is pressed. So if you're holding it down, the conditions will be met. The next one is being triggered, and this will count as being met only in the initial moment that the button is pressed. So triggered is when you want something to happen just once, when you press that button one time. The next one is being repeated, and this one's a unique one. In the help file, you can find the specifics of this if you forget. It says, while the button is continuing, Continually pressed, the conditions will count as being met in the initial moment the button is pressed, then 24 frames after, then every six frames after that. So TLDR, when you're holding it down, it's going to trigger the moment that it is pressed, and then almost half a second later, and then 10 times a second after that. The next is a script call. You can insert whatever script call you want inside this conditional branch. If the first game variable is zero, then return is true, otherwise turn is false. And all variables start as zero, and all switches start off. That's important to know. So this will return true. That's pretty much it for conditional branches. It's really simple. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Come join us on Discord. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already. Big shout out to Dejica for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you or informative in some way. If it has been, please give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.